If Leonardo da Vinci was alive today, imagine the 3D renderings, the modeling, the animations, the AR filters for Instagram that he could be designing. Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and everything creative. My name is Laszlo, I do graphic design and illustration here at DMB and today I want to talk about the best mobile apps for graphic designers. In this day and age, there are many smartphone apps out there that you can download to do a bit of content creation on the go. And after doing my research for this video, I can safely say that the landscape of these apps are, well, how to put this mildly, confusing. Some of them are alright, some of them are way overpriced, some of them are useless. And there are a selected few that I actually really like. But before we begin, I want to establish my basic set of rules a design app has to fulfill in order to stay on my phone as an actual useful graphic design software. Rule number one, it has to be clean, clear and user friendly. If it's full of bloatware or if it has adverts and all that stuff, if it freezes on me at least once, I'm out. Rule number two, an app should either be free or have a usable free version, because come on! And rule number three, it has to offer something unique that is actually useful in my practice. Something that either simplifies a task that you would do on a desktop setting, or better yet, it offers something that a desktop software like Illustrator or Photoshop cannot do. Also, let me just say, we're not gonna talk about apps for tablets, because in my eyes that's a whole different ballgame. And also, we're not gonna mention apps that are geared towards project management or productivity. We are focusing on pure digital graphic design software on a smartphone. Let's jump straight in. The first app on my list is Spark Post. If you are familiar with Canva, this is basically Adobe's version of the same thing. It's an app that you can use to make social media posts on the go by using some pre-designed templates for layouts, colors and font combinations and the like. It's got all the image dimension presets you could have a need for any social media platform and also has some free stock photo libraries integrated within the program. I use this tool on the other occasion. Here you can see I have designed some quick Instagram highlight covers for my personal account. The design board itself is quite simple and intuitive. As you can see, you can bring in some stock icons, customize the colors and so on. Apart from imagery, you can also animate text-based designs within the program. Granted, it is not giving you too many customization settings. Nevertheless, it is quite a handy little tool if you ever want to design something simple quickly on your phone for your social media feeds. Okay, before we continue, I feel like we have to address the elephant in the room. I feel like I have to state, I am not a fan of these template-based design solutions. No self-respecting designer is. But that being said, I think it's very important to also recognize that the times, they are, are changing. And the fact that graphic design software is getting more mobile, getting better and more convenient and easier to use, is just the natural progression of technology. And the mindset that these apps are coming after our careers, and they are, you know, killing graphic design and all that stuff. That is a toxic mindset that you just shouldn't endorse. It's counterproductive. The thing is, graphic designers have to get with the times and adapt instead of hiding away from progression. But that's just my two cents. The second app on my list is Photoshop Sketch. I have to admit, I used to hate apps like this in the past, as they are nothing more than dummy versions of Photoshop, which I oftentimes found very limiting. But as the years go by and phones are getting more and more powerful, these apps are starting to get developed to a level where they are becoming actually useful. I use this app to create our story templates for the Dantier and Balog Instagram account. Jacqueline has created this nice looking JPEG template. Then what I do is every week I put our present thumbnail here on top of the design whenever we got a new video posted. As I said, it's basically Photoshop Lite. So it can be handy if you want to do something very quickly and you don't have a computer on hand. I for one am trying to limit my screen time, especially on the weekends, so whenever we publish a new video on a Sunday, I just quickly put these together on my phone. App number 3 is Adobe Capture. This is a tool that can do a number of very clever things using your phone's camera. Some of these do feel a little gimmicky, but I quite like this one where you can create a color palette by pointing your phone to different things around you by matching your surroundings with hex codes. The main function I really like in this app is this kaleidoscope effect that you can do. It is such a nice and quick way of creating your own unique patterns. I guess it is a personal thing, you may or may not find this function useful in your practice. 
but I have used this to create background patterns in the past just by taking photos like these and then edit them in Illustrator. What I also want to state is this is an app that is so much fun to use and there are actual functions here which you could not do with a computer, which is the main reason why I felt like I had to include this one. I think the intuitiveness of design software on phones, that's something that we as designers should welcome and not shy away from. I mean, we can do so much more with so much less effort than ever before. I mean, why wouldn't you embrace that? This is a bit of a technological revolution that's going on right now. And it's not entirely dissimilar to, to the times when Photoshop became a thing. Even now, in common language, the fact Photoshop sort of became this, this naughty term, like this naughty word for images that are not real, you know? They are fake, they are edited, and the actual skill lies in, you know, the photographer's hands who went out and took a nice photo, and then anyone can make it look better, you know, that sort of mindset. Which is true to some extent, but at the same time, let me just quote the advertising legend Dave Dye. Is it cheating to use spices when you are cooking? If you have the best tools available to up your work's quality, why wouldn't you use them? Let me put it this way, if Leonardo da Vinci was alive today, do you think he would be doing paintings with oil and canvas? Maybe. But just imagine what he would be doing with today's software and hardware capabilities. Imagine the 3D renderings, the modeling, the animations, the AR filters for Instagram that he could be designing. Technology is fine, it's good, and the tools are getting better. Okay, the next one on my list is Lightroom. If you have used Lightroom on a desktop before, you know it is essentially a color grading software for images that is widely used by photographers. I tend to give our photos a little Lightroom treatment before I post them somewhere. There are some decent color correction settings available here for free, starting with this auto button that takes your photo and automatically tries to correct it to its best recommended settings. And I gotta say, it's quite good at guessing what you want. There are some advanced settings like ways of masking and only editing parts of an image if you can be bothered to upgrade to the paid version, but that being said, the free version is surprisingly powerful and very easy to use. I would say easier than the desktop version, which is a huge plus for beginners. And last but not least, I wanted to show you this thing called AutoDraw. Now this is not an app per se, it's a website that you need to open in your smartphone's browser. It's powered by Google, and what it does is you draw a shape, any shape onto this white canvas, and then the artificial intelligence tries to guess what you are drawing, and match it with a free to use PNG icon. Just like that. It's like magic. I mean, if you do read up on it a little bit, it's not actual magic, just a work in progress. Most of these icons have been created by one design studio in New York, and as time goes on, people will add more and more icons to its free to use library. At this point in time, the software can guess a couple hundred common icons, but this is only the beginning. Is this useful? Well, much less useful than the other apps on my list, but is it fun to use? Absolutely. And I think that's the key takeaway here. These apps provide a unique, new user experience that desktop software cannot. Computer software like Photoshop, Figma or Sketch basically the older siblings of these mobile apps. Obviously they are much more powerful, much more versatile, much more professional, much more efficient. But design is not all about efficiency, you know what I mean? Let me give you an example. Is the iPad an efficient tool? Does anyone need a tablet when you already have a computer and a smartphone? You don't. No one does. It's still a very, very successful product. Do you know why? Because it's fun to use, because it's new, because it provides a new unique user experience that makes you approach your digital life in a different, very exciting way. If you do design work, I think it's very important to challenge your way of thinking because, let's be honest, we are all guilty of, you know, getting stuck in our own ways. The longer you are in the field, the more likely you are to fall into this trap of, you know, coming up with the same, very similar design solutions to every design program that comes in your way. And I'm guilty of this as well. I've been using Photoshop since 2012, which is almost 10 years at this point. And I used to hate apps. I used to hate this idea of designing on a small screen when I have a big screen. What is that about? But that's the thing. If you just keep coming up with the same solutions to every design problem, it's just not an exciting enough way to approach this job. The graphic design industry in 2020 is very much a technology-dependent industry, and technology as a whole develops incredibly fast. The thing is, if you work in design, to some extent, you're working in tech. 
And there's no point ignoring the evolving nature of the, of the technology industry landscape. That's why it's so important to never stop learning and to keep an open mind. And this is exactly what these apps are forcing you to do. You know what, I'm somewhat sorry that this video has become a bit of an Adobe advert. I know that some of you are starting to really hate the beast that Adobe has become over the years. For all the right reasons. I struggle with that as well, but you know, I just wanted to make an honest video showing you different apps on my phone that I do actually use almost on a daily basis that I feel like actually making my job as a graphic designer somewhat easier. And the mobile software that Adobe is producing is honestly just too good to ignore. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up because that really does support our channel and really do appreciate all that. And feel free to join our little design tribe if you're interested in more content similar to this. We make videos about art, design, illustration, branding, interior design, architecture, all of that good stuff. So if any of that interests you, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you guys this time next week.